good morning, Mark. I appreciate you inviting me to uh, to, to chip in on these. Um, so by, by way of quick background, Eric Lindbergh, uh, I am uh, today the Chief Investment Officer of the Austin E. Knowlton Foundation, which is an education philanthropy, uh, 25 uh, plus years background in, uh, in private equity and, and managing private equity businesses, uh, interconnected to three, the 361 network a number of ways. Uh, Mark and I were introduced by Adam Weinberg of Denison, where we both went undergraduate. Uh, I went to Harvard Business School. Graduate uh, on the graduate level, and, and so those are the uh, alumni connections. In, in addition to having a lot of uh, business and investment interconnections with uh, with 361, <clears throat> so re uh, reflecting on 2020, I, I don't know how anyone begins to reflect properly on that. Um, and and if I'm blinded uh, in the lighting changes, weirdly, in the next two minutes, there's an absolutely outrageous Texas sunrise coming up. You're going to literally see my face light up and catch fire here. So so be aware. Um, uh, for, for 2020, um, I, I, I had two uh, opportunistic things we did that, that uh, have worked out uh, uh, tremendously. It sounds a little bit braggy, uh, but I, I broke all of my own rules. We're usually a very, very hyper-disciplined investor. We do not participate in market timing, speculation, any of the sort. Seeing the market dip in March was just too tempting for me, though, and we went extremely long on S&P 500 call options, anticipating out of March 22nd to 28th. That that market would bounce back. Um, so obviously, you know, uh, you know, uh, 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 extremely uh, lucky market timing uh, that that helped us there. We have one other uh, uh, investment that we made in 2020, equally sort of opportunistic, unique timing base. Going to turn out to be spectacular. It's uh, it's in the cannabis industry. It's confidential for now, but we'll be able to brag about it probably uh, into next year. Um, into in, as we, as I look forward to the, into 2021. Um, I, I have a couple of like macro and then micro observations. One is, um, I, it, it's unbelievable how humans forget about the return to the mean. Um, everyone thinks a strange new uh, divergence is suddenly the new normal. Everyone's going to stick to that, forgetting how much we have a pendulum that, that humans have behaviors that tend to go back to what they're accustomed to over a very long period of time. So. While I think there are permanent changes, I think we're going to see a big, particularly on the consumer side, a, a return to the mean. Consumers are going to, you're going to see a huge amount of pent up demand for travel and fun and restaurants and doing things where you can have human interactions in close, close proximities. I think 2021 would probably be an excellent year to own bars. Uh, I, I think that once the vaccine is widespread, you're going to see a big pop back in a lot of that consumer spend and, and consumer activity. At the same time, um, it, look, it, I, I, this is not a political statement at, at, at all. This is a statement of logic. Um, you can look, and every time that you have a U.S. administration that is that it, that that releases business regulations, you have economic growth associated with easier business operating conditions. The Biden and Harris administration has made extremely clear that they intend to put back in place many of the regulatory regimes that were released uh, during the last four years under President Trump, um, you're going to see some business deceleration um, and, and particularly small business deceleration uh, as, as they begin to put in place many of those safety and environmental and other, other regulations. Those may be great things for society. It's, that's, that's all fine. That is going to cause a slowdown on, on the business side. And, and I think that you know, we're going to see, other than, than sectors within consumer, um, quite a slow forward period here. The Fed has dumped unbelievable amounts of capital into the markets. Um, there's not a lot of efficiency left to be gained. Um, you, know, you, 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 you have a lot of constraints on, on growth generally. And so I think you need to be very selective and smart about where you're putting money. Um, you know, I, I, th this is stating the obvious. There's a bunch of like day traders on uh, Robinhood already making money doing this. So I'm not telling anyone anything super intelligent. Um, the one consumer sector I've been, you know, been around this for quite a long time, but in 2021, 22, um, the cannabis space is, is what you really need to be watching. The, for those that aren't aware of the U.S. House just a few days ago uh, passed a, a Cannabis Legalization Act. Um, the Senate is tipping and unclear if that gets implemented. Uh, uh, Kamala Harris has made clear that the Biden administration is going to try to remove cannabis from, from Schedule 1. Um, so the, you have 68 percent of American adults now favor legalization. That That is coming. It is an inevitable like freight train coming in that cannabis will be legalized in, in 2021. I think you have a real tipping point. 
you know, you have cannabis companies doing national uh, uh, sports sponsorships and really moving into the mainstream. And there's a lot of professionalism and value to still be unlocked there. I've been watching that industry for 10 years. Um, and you are just seeing the super professional operators begin to execute like real consumer businesses, not like pothead businesses, which is the way that they've been running uh, a lot of those businesses in, uh, in, in, uh, in, in the past years. Um, I think the other, um, <clears throat> the other thing I'd say going forward is, yeah, we do have a, a, a you know, a, an out of control federal debt situation. Um, there, there is no cap at all from anyone in governance um, with respect to the amount of borrowing that the uh, that the U.S. government is doing, um, I, I hesitate to make dire predictions. Um, I I was lucky in 1993 as a fresh analyst at the Blackstone Group. I got invited to go to a really small lunch with Pete Peterson and David Stockman, uh, who were the senior guys at, at Blackstone. Pete Peterson at that point was a huge hawk, um, talking about how the U.S. government was going to destroy itself by excessive borrowing. Um, he was a brilliant guy. Like, I believe that in 1993, it is, um, of course, you know, 17 and 18 years later, and we're still seemingly alive, even though the federal government has continued to borrow. So I don't want to uh, say that I can approach Pete Peterson's intelligence. He was saying he was worried about it a long time ago. It worries me, but it seems like the the, the, the markets continue to support this crazy level of indebtedness that the U.S. Fed, uh, U.S. federal government is is incurring. And my other big, here's my single biggest mark, though, my, my single biggest prediction. It is my single biggest fear. Um, it is my single big, biggest like concern, existential concern about the structure and well-being of our society in our businesses and markets. My, my, I think you said something about have a word to describe uh, 2021. My word for 2021 is disinformation. The, the lack of factual information that, that, that normal consumers and sophisticated business people are receiving because of the extreme profit um, and, and click and ratings focus of our media, where you are presented with whatever stimulates viewership, regardless of how close to the facts that is, is, is a huge, huge risk to the way that all of our, all of our lives work. And, and it's because, um, you know, Jeff Zucker and Suzanne Scott, if you're probably familiar, uh, the guy responsible for content at CNN and the woman responsible for content at Fox, I will tell you, they are planning to make their bonuses in 2021. They are planning to hit their ratings, uh, their, their ratings, ratings targets. They're losing the coronavirus. They're, re they're losing Trump. They already lost Russia. There's going to be more panic. This is not going to be a peaceful 2021 where there's no reason for you to be freaked out and having to tune in to CNN and Fox and New York Times and all the balance of that, that media and all the social media guys. I don't think there's any conspiracy. I think there is a profit motive. Um, and, and we face a real challenge in filtering through what are the actual logical, reasonable facts um, as opposed to the panic mongering headlines that get all of us revved up and excited in consuming this content that may not actually be very accurate. And, and Eric, just to thank you, uh, you, you moved over the, uh, your goals in terms of a, any social development goals that you're focusing on and any asks that you have of our network. And, and Mark, I appreciate the prompt. I, I, I went right over that. I got so excited talking about the- Okay, that, sun, that, that Texas sunlight sort of- <laughs> I, I, wor you see my, my brain is fading as that, uh, as, as that, uh, uh, as that, that sun is, uh, is radiating me. Um, so, um, with respect to 2021, um, uh, same value to me, um, you know, that we've had on since the very beginning, Mark, which is to have, have that, that network as thought partners, um, as sources of broader uh, sort of intelligence and and, um, and and information sharing. It's it's absolutely invaluable, and in my case, um, you know, being in the unique position of having a, a nice pool of capital, um, having a background in in, in deal execution. Um, but not having enough capital to execute in-house comfortably some things that I see, incredibly valuable is to have other smaller entrepreneurial money managers who can look at, 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 at investments in partnership and together and, and clubbing up on, on investments. The, uh, the access to those folks within your network is, is incredibly, incredibly valuable to, to us. Um, and, you know, philanthropically, we already have, a, I, I would say, we don't have something new for 2021. You know, what we are primarily a philanthropic operator. We're very disciplined and organized uh, in, in terms of what our approach to, to what our mission is. We've been executing on that uh, pretty well for, you know, for 15 years now. Um, it, it is really to continue uh, and, and, you know, to be specific, 
we're supporters of higher education as our the primary destination for our capital. We try to be very active, proactive thought partners. Higher ed is in a period of uh, a lot of transition, a lot of threat. Um, and, you know, I, I think what's notable for us in 2021 is, is partnering together uh, with, with our college network to, uh, to really enable the, 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 the leap forward that's required to, um, to, to improve students for life after college in ways that weren't even imagined 10 years ago, right? Which means uh, not, the, not get your resume right and set you up with some interviews, but give you deep levels, even in the liberal arts colleges, very deep preparation and sophistication in being ready to launch, I'm gonna steal a word from Adam uh, Weinberg at Denison, launch like a rocket into your life coming out of college so that you're truly advantaged and there's a, a lot of return on investment uh, for, for going and spending four years getting a degree. Excellent. 